guys, welcome to My Little Paintbrush. I am Miss Sarah, and today we are going to be honoring our hometown heroes with this awesome painting. I'm so excited to do this with you guys. A um, couple things. Remember that even though we aren't in the studio together, Miss Sarah's rules still apply, okay? Be kind to yourself, be patient as we learn together, and remember there's a first time for everything, all right? So it's okay to pause the video as we go if you need to catch up. I do paint pretty quickly. I have painted this before, so you haven't. So remember you can pause it or rewind. Do whatever you need to do to not feel rushed throughout this process. So let's get started. Um, I have a couple brushes I'm gonna use today. I have a detail, a large flat, and a medium flat. They look like this. Basically, you just want a detail and then a good size brush that will fit fairly simply easily in these characters, okay? You're also gonna need a lead pencil. I have this handy one here that we use at school. So honestly, you don't need anything fancy here with this pencil, any lead pencil works. The reason we're gonna use a lead pencil is I'm gonna do something called an image transfer. Um, it says hometown heroes, right? That we're gonna put right across the top here. If you wanna go ahead and freehand this and just paint in hometown heroes, you can. I just know from experience that it can be a little tricky. So we've provided for you an image that you can transfer on yourself. If you would like to pick anything else, maybe thank you, um, we support you, anything like that, you are welcome to also do an image transfer. You just have to print it out and then I'll show you what to do next. So here we go. I have my image, it says Hometown Heroes here. I wanna place it right above um, my image, right? So this is what I want it to look like. In order to transfer it, I'm gonna flip it around and you see I've already started. I take my lead pencil here and we're just going to quickly uh, fill in the space here with my lead. You wanna keep it pretty close together, okay? Keep your lines close together. Any space you leave will not show up on your transfer. So I, I keep my lines tight. See that? Really close together here. And I'm gonna just quickly go up. The darker your lead is, the darker it'll show up on your canvas. So I try to put a little bit of pressure on here, but not so much that I tear through my paper, right? Okay, so once I have my lead on there, it looks like this. It's gonna take you a minute, so you can, like I said, pause the video, take a second, and go ahead and fill that out. And then figure out where you wanna place this. I'm trying to center it the very best I can here, right above uh, my image. Okay, so I'm gonna try and center that and hold it down while I trace the words, okay? And we're doing this before we paint because sometimes the lead has a hard time um, sticking to paint. So usually if I'm doing an image transfer, I do the, do the transfer first before I paint just to make sure it goes on there. If you wanna paint first, you can. Our um, yellow is light enough that it shouldn't give you too much trouble when trying to transfer, but just thought it doesn't hurt to do it now because our yellow is translucent and when we paint over this lead, you can still see it. It's one of the awesome things about the acrylic yellow we're using, okay? So remember, however you trace it is how it's going to appear on your painting. All right, so there it is, you can see it, right? So now that I have this transfer done, I'm gonna take my pencil and just quickly go over it and give it a darker shade, okay? Because I want it to really show up for me under my paint. I don't wanna have to worry about that later. I'm just gonna go over these letters pretty quick here and just make sure I can see it. Isn't it nice to have this as a guide so that you don't have to worry about writing it later, whether or not it's gonna fit in the right place. It's just already done. All right, so 
And this font is kind of great because it's imperfect, which I love. It takes the stress off of you with having to get all of your letters just right. Okay, so we have our hometown heroes traced on there, ready to go. I'm going to set my pencil aside and we're going to get to work. We have a lot of painting to do. So let's grab a small brush. I'm going to use my detail brush. You can grab a small, any small brush you have. Put it in your water, loosen up the bristles. And we're going to make some skin tones, okay? First thing we're going to do is put our skin tones on. So I have brown, black, and white here, okay? These colors, <clears throat> excuse me, you can use them to create any tone you like. It's really all you need. So first things first, let's start here with our officer. I'm going to grab some white and add a little bit of brown to it, okay? We're going to create a shade here. Here we go. All different skin tones here. So I'm going to create a shade here and the first thing we're going to do is just, you don't need to worry too much about whether or not your neck is too big or too long. Okay, You're going to bring your hair in and put hair there in a minute. So I'm not even worried about it. Let's add an ear over here just in case your hairline shows, you know, the ear. So I like to add those in. And we're gonna come right down here and just add his arm right there. Just shows a little bit of it. Okay, but we wanna go ahead and add that skin tone first so we can build around it, okay? All right, so there's that one. I'm gonna add a little bit more brown to it just to change up the shading a little bit. Okay, so as you go, you can Kind of gauge how you want to do it so that all of your images here, your heroes, have different tones, skin tones to them. So whenever you're mixing, you just kind of add and adjust it as you go, okay? So we're going to go ahead and paint this one over here because I'm mixing up my shades as I go. I'm going to put her arms in. There. And her little hand that comes over here and the neck. Now you can add ears as well to hers. I'm not going to. She has a pretty full head of hair, so I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the next skin tone here. I'm going to add a little more brown to it, if you can see that. So you just adjust it as you go. I'm gonna add more brown. There we go. Until I like it. I think I like that. We're gonna go ahead and paint that in. And you can see it just automatically changes there, right? Without a lot of effort on our part, which is great. Those that in there. Make sure you have some, enough water on your brush, all right? Because as you're doing this, if you don't have enough water, you'll notice. Okay, so she's holding, let's see, what's it called? The tethoscope? Did I say that right? She's holding that right there. So, we're going to bring her arms together here. And you'll see that we didn't trace it on for you right there. That's to give you the freedom to create that heart shape however you want. I'm just going to go ahead and make it into a triangle, just like that. Okay. It's nothing too complicated. Just create that triangle shape there. Okay, just like that. And let's go ahead and add her neck. Now, depending on what kind of hair you're gonna do, you may wanna bring that neck up a little bit, right? Because that is what's so fun with painting characters is you can 
just change it up. You can add any kind of hair. You could even switch up the people here, you know, um, male or female, you can switch it all up however you like. All right, so I'm gonna do another skin tone over here. We're just gonna mix in more brown. So I, I go light and then a shade darker every time. Okay, so that's kind of a, a way to gauge it, a good rule of thumb. That way you don't contaminate all your paint. You can just kind of change it as you go. All right. Go ahead and add that neck there. And I'm gonna give him some ears. I haven't decided yet. His hair might be a little shorter there on the sides. So I'm gonna give him those ears okay, on each side. All right, so one more shade. I'm gonna grab some black this time and mix it in here with my brown over here. Okay, get that shade. And just mix it in with your brown. All right, so there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and paint. I like to start, oh, got a drip there. I like to start right down here where the sleeve ends. Just give those little hands there in, in his pockets. All right. All right. And then over here, same thing. So we got the sleeves. Add the hands there in the pockets. And then the neck, right up here. Curve that around where the collar is. And again, you can kind of bring it up a little bit if you feel like the hair might be a little shorter, right? And I think I'm going to add some ears as well to him right here. Just kind of curve it out. Add those ears. Just gives us options when we're putting the hair in. There we go. Okay, so we have all of our skin tone on. So now we can start doing the fun part of filling in all the clothing. I love doing this. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse out my brush and let's grab a medium flat or a medium round. Just a smaller brush. You wanna be able to fit it into all these areas pretty easily. All right, so we're just gonna start left to right, okay? Now, with our officer here, his outfit is blue, but I'm gonna mix some white into it. I'm just gonna come over here, mix some white in my blue, get the shade I want. I want it not too light, but a darker, darker shade. So let's go ahead and put that on there. You don't have to think too much about all the details just yet. We're just gonna get our colors in. Okay. There we go. And I like to just kind of have some movement when I'm painting the bottom, the pants here. Just kind of let your brush flow there on the side. Whenever you're painting clothing, it's a good idea to let your brush move a little bit there to show movement in your paintings. Okay, so I could probably benefit from using a little bit of a smaller brush here in that area just because it's so tight. So if you're a little uncomfortable using a large flat brush, switch it up. I'm gonna keep using it and just use the toe, but you know, you can switch that up, no problem. Just gonna go around and get that neckline on both sides. Go 
kind of curve your brush around. There we go. Okay, so we have our officer's outfit on. So we're gonna move over here. Since I'm using blue, her scrubs are um, a really light blue. So I'm just gonna add some white to this blue I already created. Okay, to get that really light white. So you can just quickly add in that light blue to her scrubs. Just gonna brush that in. Give her a nice neckline. And I kind of let that white be in there. I didn't mix my paint perfectly because that gives us different shades as we paint. And again, movement in our outfit, our clothing. Gives our characters some personality and little detail there. All right. There we go. Gonna fill that in and you can adjust this blue make it a little darker or lighter whatever you're feeling on that my brush it's dry don't want a dry brush if you're feeling like that brush is dry add water You notice I'm not doing any particular outlining or anything right now. We'll do that in a minute. Don't need to worry about that just yet. All right, I just don't wanna cover up that arm. I gotta kinda go a little slow there. Okay, there's her scrubs, all in, looks good. Okay, I'm gonna rinse my brush. We're gonna move on to our next color. And this one, I'm going to just switch to medium flat here with my brush real quick all right so with this one here now we're going to paint the red fireman here so I'm going to add just a tiny bit of white to my red not a lot because we really want this to be a red outfit but a little bit of white helps it go on easier so I always encourage our artists that are painting with us that use these acrylics to just add a touch of white to their paint. It brings a little shine to it too. Okay, so we're just gonna fill this in. There we go. Bottom part. And now we have some yellow stripes on our fire man here. So we want to try not to paint in those squares, okay? We're going to go around them as carefully as we can just so that we can fill those in with yellow because yellow is not an easy color um, to cover with. <laughs> with. You're not going to be able to cover um, your red very easily, so we want to try to avoid that. Go, we're gonna fill that in all the way around so we don't lose that fun shape. All right, there he is. All right, let's just paint this top part. You feel a little more comfortable holding your canvas. Go right ahead and do that. Usually, when I'm painting detail work like this up close, I'm holding my canvas. Just makes it a lot easier. Or it's flat in front of me. 
to do this kind of detail work. All right. Let's blend that in. All right, so I'm gonna just do this area here. I don't wanna go in that line. Go around here and get his arm in. It's just kind of showing there next to our nurse. Let's go ahead and do this arm. And the imperfection in the stripes on the shirt and your brush movement are what give him character. So feel free to do that whenever you're painting these types of images. Just let your brush flow pretty easily. All right, let's let him dry a second. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Good work. Okay, we have our doctor here. And I chose a light turquoise for her pants or her scrubs there. So I'm just gonna mix some white with my phthalo green to get this really light, pretty color. I'm just gonna paint that in there. You notice her shirt is white, so I'm not even gonna paint it. You can, I just leave it, the um, canvas which is kind of fun. So we don't need to paint her shirt. I'm just going to paint her scrubs here on the bottom. There we go. Again, just kind of let my brush move kind of free there. Okay. Rinse our brush. All right, for our um, military man over here, we're gonna mix a couple colors to get his. So his outfit is a phthalo green. I mix some phthalo green here with some yellow. I'm gonna pick up some yellow, mix it over here so you get this limey color. Okay, so I'm mixing those colors together and then I'm gonna add some brown. I want to add some brown to that green and just add and some white so you're going to mix white phthalo green yellow and some brown to get that awesome color all right so once you have that let's go ahead and just put that on there it's pretty pretty fun to mix those colors and get different shades. So your green might be a little bit different than mine and that is okay. That's what makes it so fun to mix because everyone's looks a little bit different. Okay, so I'm gonna put this collar on. Make sure we have that shoulder shape. Okay all the way down and around her. If you don't mix it super well, you're gonna get a little bit of brown streak showing up, which I'm, I'm a big fan of that. So you might notice as I'm painting that sometimes I get those different shades in my painting and that's how I don't fully mix my colors. I let them be. makes it kind of fun. Okay, so there's the top. Now let's just put the bottom on here. You want to try and paint up and down the direction that his pants would go. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to put a little bit of brown just on the corner of my brush right here. Okay. I'm going to use that brown to just go around the edges of his outfit fairly quickly. I'm not being too picky about it. Just gives us that little shade. His collar here. Okay. And we'll come back in just a minute and put in all of those spots on his outfit in a minute. 
This just kind of helps us not lose. See, I shaped his arm out there. There we go. Okay. Perfect. So let's let him dry just a minute. We'll come back to him in a second. All right, let's go over here to our fireman and get some yellow on our brush. His outfit should be dry now. We should be able to paint that yellow in at this point. There we go. Make sure we get those stripes in there. Okay, we'll put it here as well. That yellow. The fun thing with yellow is if you go out of the lines, can't even tell because it's so translucent. I use yellow for things a lot that I don't want to have to stress about going out of the lines or not covering well. All right, perfect. So let's let that dry a second. I'm going to rinse my brush and let's go over here to our officer. I'm going to get some black for his vest here. Okay, I'm just gonna add a touch of white to my black. Again, we try to add white to our paintings. It just looks better when we add white to our acrylic paint. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and add this here. This white square here, I'm gonna try and keep it white. It just makes it easier later on when I'm trying to cover it in white to help it stand out better. But if you paint over it, it's just a simple little brush stroke square there. You don't need to worry too much about it being there in the way. We'll add all the highlights and everything in a minute. Right now we just want to get these colors in, right? Here. If you notice, I try not to pick up my brush when I'm doing the edges, right? That gives us a nice line. So I'm going to try and go around without picking it up. All right, and do this edge here. There we go. Awesome. Well, now we know where that square is going to go, right? Later on. All right, let's add some little squares here to the back of his vest where he holds all his things, right? You just do these little brush strokes. I'm gonna do two strokes for a square there, a bigger square, and then we have a smaller one. You can do different sizes if you want. Okay, I'm gonna put a bigger one here, just like that. And one there. You can kind of decide where you want to put all of his different pockets and things that he holds back there, okay? And then we have his little radio here. So I'm just gonna paint a little square coming up right there off of his vest. See that? Perfect, just like that. Rinse our brush. Okay, looks so good. We're getting all of our outfits on there. Okay, let's, our um, military man over here, he's dry. So I'm gonna grab some brown now. We're just gonna add those spots. Now, the thing with this is you can just kind of have fun with this. You don't have to be precise in how, how all this goes on, okay? You're just basically zigzagging your brush and adding that shape in there, okay? Just kind of move your brush around, not being too picky about it, All right? Because when you look at camouflage, it's not something that necessarily has a specific pattern. So, I'm just gonna kind of wiggle my brush around with that brown on it and let it land where it lands. have one coming right under here, under his collar.
color, a little spot here. All right, I kind of did a, a bigger one here coming off. But again, I'm just wiggling my brush and it's, it's gonna land different every time you do it. So that's what makes this kind of fun. Okay, just like that. And then let's see, we'll put one here along the bottom of his shirt. And a little more. You just want to kind of fill the space in pretty evenly so it feels like it's all coming together. All right, awesome. Okay, let's see. We'll put a little bit there in his collar too. All right, let's rinse our brush. He's done. All right, my favorite part. I love adding the hair. <laughs> it's one of my favorite things to do. So we're going to go ahead and start adding hair color and you can do different shades or whatever you want. You can mix and match, put it however you like. Okay. Just grab the first shade you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and start, um, with my blondie because I like to start with my lighter colors and work my way. Okay. To dark. So I'm gonna grab some blonde and a little bit of white on my brush here. Let's go ahead and fill hers in. She has a big old bun on her head. So, which is something I wish I could pull off. Can't pull off the bun, but it's so cute. So we're going to just go ahead and fill in that head. And at the neck area, I just kind of shape a smiley shape there at the base of her neck and the trick with hair is you want to try and move your brush in the direction let's put a little bun up there okay there we go you know, just a big old circle right there at the top of her head so you want to move your brush as if you are combing her hair with literally a brush that is the trick to painting hair. So the direction you're going to be moving her hair when pulling it up is the direction you want to go with your brush. Okay, so I have her little bun done. And now let's do, we have, I have brown over here. So my next color, I'm just gonna load this with some brown and a little bit of white. I always add a little bit of highlight to my brush to do hair. That way I get both colors going on as I paint. So here we go. I'm going to put that in. Now you can be really um, precise and do a clean stroke here at the base of his neck, or you can be loose with your brush and let it just kind of land as hair would. It's totally up to you on that. Okay. But again, I'm going to try and move my brush in the direction that I imagine he brushes his hair. So my brush where his comb, you can imagine he's going this way. We have those highlights showing up, right? Okay, so let's rinse our brush. Okay, so here she is um, a little bit of brown mixed with some black. So I have both going on here for her. I just like to mix up different shades. All shades are beautiful. So we can just add that. And I'm not doing a perfect shape around her head because as we all know, our hair sits differently on our head. It's not perfect, right? I mean, mine isn't. So I'm just letting that be, but I'm going to add a ponytail to her. So I come down here as if that's right where she's going to put a rubber band in her hair. And then we're just going to shape these curls going down her back. So I'm just doing a, um, basically a sideways smiley and a smiley that connect there. See that two smileys that connect. Okay. And then we're going to do this little curl at the bottom. It ends here. 
with a curl right there. Okay, there we go. Okay, perfect. And just let those shades land, okay? You don't want to overbrush, you just want to leave it alone. So there's hers. And let that dry a second. Let's go over here. We're going to do his next. And I have black on my brush for him and a little bit of white for shading. And I went ahead and kind of made curly strokes with my brush. So you want to kind of move your brush um, in curly shapes as you go on this one. See how I'm moving it around? Okay, there we go. It's kind of fun to do all different textures and shades of hair here. Okay, come right here to the base. Keep your brush moving. There we go. And then add a little bit of light in there. and let that dry for a minute. Perfect. Okay, so our last one here, I'm gonna add some white to my black. Get this grayish color. Okay, we're gonna paint this one over here. Same way we've done before, you just kinda wanna move in the direction of the hair. And the base of the neck. There we go. And again, leave those highlights alone. Don't overbrush it. Perfect, okay. Good work guys, let's rinse our brush. Okay, and now we're ready to just add some highlights real quick. I'm gonna just use my flat brush and put a little bit of white on the corner like that. Okay, white on the corner. And I'm gonna start left to right so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna add the highlights to our heroes here. And that way, you can really see those little details that are easily missed. Okay. Add a little bit here. And, don't wanna get in the way there, the camera. Okay, but you want to be able to kind of add these highlights so you can see them. You'll notice that they stand out a lot better. Okay. All right, put white on there. Add a little bit up here. And then you can just add some to the hair as well if you'd like while you're at it. So for her, I have a little bit on her scrubs there. I'm rinsing my brush, I got some black in it. Okay, and then I'll do some in her hair. Some white there. Awesome. Okay, now our fireman here. Let's just add a little bit here his outfit really helps his arms and everything stand out his legs and then here add some there okay and again to the hair now with her hair I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to the sides because she's so blonde I like to add a little bit of brown to my brush just kind of stroke that in it helps you see where her um, bun is and everything so just add a little bit of brown to your brush brush that in there if you like to add some shading to her all right should we put that white in there? Perfect. 
And then we're highlighting here. We're gonna go over here to our military. Put a little bit on his collar. Okay, awesome. Let me add a little bit of highlight there. Okay, let's rinse our brush. All right, I'm gonna go right here to this little patch and we're gonna paint white in there. And a streak of yellow. I just kind of press and pull, just like that. So we can leave that alone. Perfect. Okay. Let's switch over to our detail brush. Okay, I have my detail brush here. I'm gonna load it up with some black. Black's gonna be our best friend here for a minute. All right. So load up your black. Okay, and we're just going to add some shape here to everything. So we're gonna come up here to our collar. If you don't have a detail brush, you just wanna use a line brush of some kind, okay? Something you can quickly um, outline with. We see how it really helps him stand out there. So we just want something to clean that up, okay? So, also, I have a little cord, just an extra detail here, that runs from his um, top of his vest here. It goes all the way around. So you're gonna move your brush in this rounded motion, just like you would a cord, just like a cord does when it's wound up, right? So you go all the way from one corner to the other, and I put a dot of white on the very tip of my brush just to highlight it a little bit so you can actually see it with black on black, just like that. It doesn't need to be perfect, it's just so you can see his cord there. Awesome. All right, okay, let's add some, some little things here. We're gonna just add the bottom of his shirt there. And then some little pockets. So let's kind of decide where the center of his pants are and I'm gonna put a little line right there. And then you can put your pockets just in the center. It can be a square can be triangle, just whatever shape you want. I've seen it both ways, so just like that. Perfect. All right, we're going to do the same thing over here for her. Just like that, and then we'll have a little bit come right up there. All right, now for her, it's gonna take just a minute. Since her shirt is white, we're gonna need to just outline it real quick here. Okay, so that it shows up. Let's put a little collar on her, just like that. I'm also gonna just add little curls to her hair here for a little detail. While I'm at it. Okay, so I come straight across. Now her shirt, you can see, kind of comes up a little bit right there. And then I have a little line here, just to, on each side of the top there. Just really helps clean that up. Okay. And her top here, we're gonna go straight across. Just like that. And then if you want to add some creases, this is where you can get a little bit creative and how you do clothing, just wherever you think it might wrinkle a little bit. Add a curl there, the black. Perfect, okay. I'm gonna go right over here, do the same thing with our little fireman here. Just outline. Give him some sleeves. Really helps to be able to see that, right? Same thing on the shoulder. Okay. Right around. 
And this is where you can give him a collar, just like that. Just make that shape, that smiley shape underneath the collar. Right here, follow that along. Okay, I'm just gonna follow my yellow lines here. And with him, you know how those fireman outfits are big. You just wanna show that wrinkle here along the back. If you want, you can just show there's some movement there. This as well, right along the top. Shoulder two, okay. Now we're gonna finish up the back here. And you can kind of see my lines aren't perfect, right? We just kind of, we want to make it look like he's, has some movement there. Put his pants on there. He also has some pockets, so add those as well. These little details are what really Finish it up just like that. Awesome. All right. Just outline his ears there. There we go. All right, let's finish up our nurse here. All the way around her sleeves. Now here we gotta give her a sleeve so you can actually see it. Just like that. And the bottom. Right. Finish up her scrubs. Perfect. Okay, our military man here. We're just gonna go ahead and make sure all of his lines are finished up too. Follow his arms here. You're gonna wanna come right up on his sleeve. The same thing and just finish out his arms and give him a collar. here and he also has some pockets so if you would like to give him some pockets there just two little squares awesome all right guys looks so good let's do our finish up work here so with these different skin tones if you would like you can outline them I use brown to outline because there's so many different tones the brown is so much better than using black I feel like because it just shows up and blends better with our different tones here so I just use brown to go ahead and fill that in do all of this area here there we go but this way you can kind of finish up those and make sure they stand out. Neck here, and it also covers up any pencil marks because that skin tone doesn't always cover it up. So you can just kind of outline his ears too so the ears show up better. There we go. Okay, I'm just going to do this fun little thing here. For our doctor we're going to give her a heart shape scope here so you can kind of decide how big you want it I like to start at the bottom of my arms there so that it meets together and just create that triangle first just like that 
basically you're just going to create that triangle and then this heart shape to meet there in the middle just like that now if you'd like to trace it first you can i know it can probably seem a little scary to do that so if you would like to trace it first you can come straight down right there on that side and then this side come down and we're going to veer off into this v shape but curve it like that and the center as well curve that in the rainbow shape perfect just like that now we're going to get a little bit of our gray here that i've mixed already on my palette okay to finish that up and you just do a straight line and curve it like an l one is slightly longer than the other okay straight line and curve it and over here you're going to create a circle with your brush just like that then flip your brush around okay we're going to put a black dot in the center of that gray one just like that wipe your brush off get a dot of red and put that red on the bottom where your gray is okay then i'm just going to use some black and go right under some of the red or on the top just so it really stands out just add that low light there and also show what's going above and below in there that way you can see it better right all right guys good work so cute i love it so much all right let's go ahead and just finish up the top there all right so this area here though real quick if you want you can just add these strands of hair it's kind of fun to do when you're doing any finish up work if you want you can make it look like the hair is blowing in the wind so i just grab some of my black okay and give my hair some movement if you want to or you can leave it because it's super cute just the way it is i did want her bun to kind of show up a little more so i added some black just around the edges there on the base of her neck and see so it can just stands out a little better all right so let's use our large flat to just finish up here. We're going to get a large flat brush. We're going to put some yellow on it, All right? And yellow and white. I wanted it pretty light, not very dark. And I'm starting at the top with my yellow. Okay, I want it to look like the light, you know, they're walking towards the light. I love that. So we're just going to go around here and start curving your brush stroke so that it's not straight anymore. You're curving it, okay? Just like that. There we go. Curve it. You can reach over and paint the side of your canvas and the top right now make sure you have all that done and you can see I still can see my tracing right so that's why I traced it first because our um, yellow is so awesome that way it's so translucent that I'm not even worried about it got a little bit of black on my brush there that's easy to fix though. You just cover it with white after it dries. Okay, so once you paint the top there with your white, let's see. Yeah, let's cover it right up. Okay, with our white and our yellow, go straight across like that. Once that's done and you like the way it looks, grab your detail brush and some black. Make sure you have enough water in your black. You want your black to be pretty inky for this final part, okay? So make sure you have enough water in there. Okay, so here we go. I have my brush ready, it's nice and wet. 
And you're gonna go ahead and just trace your hometown hero's image transfer, just like that. And if you have enough water, it should go pretty quick. You shouldn't have to pick up your brush too much, but if you don't, it might be a slow process. And that's okay. Slow and steady wins the race, guys. No need to rush. So here we go. Remember to breathe when you're doing letters. But if you have a nice detail brush, your image transfer um, should be about the same size as your brush. I mean, I'm not too worried about it, so I'm just kind of going. So the goal is to not push too hard, which is sometimes tricky to learn, right? Brush pressure. This is good practice. Is that one. Heroes. Here we go. All the way around. Remember you can slow down when doing this. Hometown Heroes, there it is guys. I love it, good work. Find a special place for your name. You wanna put your signature in there. I like to just kind of find a, an open space next to my image and sneak it in there. So I'm gonna put mine right here. There's my signature. Thank you so much for painting with me today, guys. We can't see, wait to see your work. We'll see you next time, bye.